This was the one book that Steve Jobs had in his personal library which was his greatest resource. Today we will go deep into the teachings of the autobiography of a yogi and we will understand the extraordinary powers of manifestation of different yogis and we will discuss various metaphysical concepts that are mentioned within this great masterpiece now there are various concepts and teachings within this book but we are looking at one aspect and a part of this book to understand how there is technically no limits to an awakened human being the advaita channel is about conscious living and conscious creation here we explore vedanta and various spiritual teachings from ancient india to understand the nature of reality and to consciously create our lives so make sure to hit like and subscribe to our channel to help us spread this ancient knowledge part 1 is about understanding this reality in this book swami yogananda tells us that this universe the material universe is simply a projection it's maya and this is the very teaching of the ancient advaita vedanta here he also talks about unity and oneness and he talks about how great yogis go beyond maya and have total control over it Now here I am quoting from the book directly from science then if it must be so let man learn the philosophic truth that there is no material universe its wrap and its woof is maya illusion its mirages of reality all break down under analysis as one by one the reassuring props of a physical cosmos crash beneath him man dimly perceives his idolatrous resilience his past transgression of the divine command thou shall have no other gods before me in his famous equation outlining the equivalence of mass and energy einstein proved that the energy in any particle of matter is equal to its mass or weight multiplied by the square of the velocity of light the release of the atomic energies is brought about through annihilation of the material properties the death of matter has been the birth of an atomic age when it comes to the nature of reality swami paramahamsa yogananda writes in the 14th chapter of his book it is the spirit of god that actively sustains every form and force in the universe yet he is transcendental and aloof in the blissful uncreated void beyond the worlds of vibratory phenomenon master explained here he is referring to the vision that he had of his guru shri yukteswar giri saints who realize their divinity even while in the flesh know a similar twofold existence they engage in the earthly work they yet remain immersed in an inward beatitude The Lord has created all men from the limitless joy of his being though they are painfully cramped by the body God nevertheless expects that souls made in his image shall ultimately rise above all sense identifications and reunite with him and Swami ji goes on to say the cosmic vision left many permanent lessons by daily stilling my thoughts i could win release from the delusive conviction that my body was a mass of flesh and bones traversing the hard soil of matter the breath and the restless mind i saw were like storms which lashed the ocean of light into waves of material forms as often i silenced the two natural tumults I beheld the multitudinous waves of creation melt into one lucent sea even as the waves of the ocean their tempest subsiding serenely dissolve into unity this explanation is very similar to the teaching of ashtavakra that we had covered in one of our previous videos basically what Swami Paramahamsa Yogananda is telling here is that there is one infinite consciousness and that is God and each and every one of us are one with God 
at the level of our soul we are one with that infinite consciousness but because of our identification with this flesh blood and bones and our mind we experience this limitation and the yogis who expand their consciousness and who identify themselves with this cosmos will experience themselves as this cosmos the best way to understand this is through the example of the dream and i know we have covered this many times but this is very relevant when we go to sleep we experience a dream world and we experience a dream ego and we think that we are that dream ego who is having a particular experience in the dream world we think that the different objects of the dream the different people within the dream everything is real and everything has its own independent existence but only when we wake up we realize that it was all a projection of our mind our mind projected a dream world for us to experience and it put itself in the position of a dream ego to have that experience just like this even this waking world no matter how real it seems and no matter how independent and permanent it looks this is also not absolute this is also not ultimate there is an infinite consciousness which has projected this universe and which has put itself in the position of an individual jiva like you and me so we are not this body and mind instead we are that infinite consciousness which is the source of creation this is the true nature of reality part 2 is about understanding the powers of the great yogis here swami yogananda talks about how different yogis can materialize and dematerialize any physical object or even their own physical bodies as they wish when they want to light velocity is a mathematical standard or constant not because there is an absolute value in 186000 miles a second but because no material body whose mass increases with its velocity can ever attain the velocity of light stated in another way only a material body whose mass is infinite could equal the velocity of light this conception brings us to the law of miracles and then he goes on to explain different masters who hold tremendous power over this maya that is the material world swami yogananda says the masters who are able to materialize and dematerialize their bodies or any other object and to move with the velocity of light and to utilize the creative light rays in bringing into instant visibility any physical manifestation have fulfilled the necessary einsteinian condition their mass is infinite the consciousness of a perfected yogi is effortlessly identified not with a narrow body but with the universal structure gravitation whether the force of newton or the einsteinian manifestation of inertia is powerless to compel a master to exhibit the property of weight let us understand what swami ji is telling here he is using the principles which were explained by einstein and he is using the most famous equation which is e equals mc square to explain how yogis travel at the speed of light how they materialize and dematerialize and how they perform various miracles without defying the equation itself so what he is pointing towards here is that no material body or no material object whose mass increases with its velocity can ever attain the velocity of light and only an object or a material body whose mass is infinite could equal the velocity of light and these yogis who have mastery over their body and consciousness their mass is equivalent to infinite because they are not identified with their body and mind and instead they are identified with the entire cosmos because of this their mass is infinite and hence they are able to materialize dematerialize their physical bodies 
and they are able to move with the velocity of light and utilize creative light rays in bringing into instant visibility any physical manifestation all the while not defying einsteinian condition this is a very interesting concept and i had never thought about this in this way ever before and swami ji goes on to say a yogi who through perfect meditation has merged his consciousness with the creator perceives the cosmical essence as light to him there is no difference between the light rays composing water and the light rays composing land free from matter consciousness free from the three dimensions of space and the fourth dimension of time a master transfers his body of light with equal ease over the light rays of earth water fire or air long concentration on the liberating spiritual eye has enabled the yogi to destroy all delusions concerning matter and its gravitational weight therefore he sees the universe as essentially undifferentiated mass of light the book also mentions the divine knowledge of light phenomena possessed by a master enables them to instantly project and manifest the ubiquitous light atoms in conformance with the yogi's powers of will and visualization in the book swami ji also talks about an incredible story where a master manifests a golden palace in the himalayas and this is a very interesting and a very mind bending story and i strongly suggest you get this book and you read it and i guarantee you that this will be one of the best books that you will ever read in your life part 3 is about the practical applications that we can learn from this book the first point is about the importance of inward realization about the significance of sadhana versus intellectual study so many of us take up intellectual study of the scriptures and these teachings but to practice them every single day and to meditate and to go inwards is a challenge and this book encourages us to do it so that we can progress spiritually this book also talks about the importance of meditation and yoga there are different aspects of meditation and there are different methods of yoga when it is used under the right guidance in the right way can transform our lives and can take us to different dimensions of experience and in the book there are discussions of the four paths to enlightenment which is the gnana yoga the path of intellectual realization karma yoga the path of selfless action third bhakti yoga the path of absolute devotion and raj yoga the path of using meditation and yogic practices to prepare the body and mind for samadhi so the book tells us that based on our tendencies based on the way we are we can choose a path which is most compatible to us and which is more relevant to us coming to more takeaways from this book first of all this book talks about the illusory nature of the material universe and it describes the world as maya which is a projection or an illusion and the book also talks about cosmic consciousness and spiritual realization it describes the divine experience of cosmic consciousness which can be bestowed by a master when a disciple through meditation and yoga practice has strengthened their mind to a degree where the vast vistas of world will not overwhelm them and on unity and oneness the book conveys the idea that everything is one and the duality is a mere illusion the book talks about various metaphysical concepts like materialization dematerialization traveling at the speed of life and so on and it says that the abilities of perfected yogis to do all these things is possible because they would have transcended their identification with the body and mind and they would have gained mastery over this matrix or maya the book also talks about the unity of self and the supreme self which is similar to the teachings of adiguru shankaracharya 
who said jeeva brahmaiva napara the jeeva which is me and you are one with that infinite consciousness or god the book also provides a lot of practical wisdom on spirituality on how we should live our lives the importance of meditation and yogic practices and so on so make sure to have a read hello there if you wish to understand the true nature of reality and learn about consciousness conscious creation and the teachings of the ancient vedanta in order to live your life with purpose achieve fulfillment and consciously create a life that you truly want to live then you can join our community come learning platform the advaita conscious society for more information visit advaita.com thank you